Hey class, welcome back. This is the beginning of module three. Before we start talking about the content, um, I would like to discuss with you some class businesses and then uh, about the module two assignments. Let's with, uh, start with the assignments. So I got um, questions. I look at the quiz results. Um, First of all, I'm a little bit surprised because, you know, the quiz, you actually could um, take it three times. Um, but not not that, you know, I'm complaining. Now I can see that where you are having problems, so I can um, give you a little bit of help in those areas. So a lot of questions about set precision. Um, and I... You know, now if I see something, I would put it in the announcement also. And this is exactly what I put in one of the announcements last uh, week to see if I can help you with this particular um, keyword or function that you, you, you need to use to format your dollar values. Um, so to revisit it, Remember to include this IO manipulation header uh, because it's a fixed point because you want only you want two points precision um, after the decimal point. So the keyword is fixed and is used this way, and then um, you only need two numbers afterwards. Um, this is the link to the documentation. You would need to go there because you would need to figure out for the coming assignment uh, for scientific um, precision. How do you set it up? Test coverage. Um, some of you hand in assignment and then when it's the positive and negative numbers uh, mixed back, uh, it works well. Your program actually works perfectly. But then when it's only positive or negative numbers. Some of your homework uh, actually return. Uh, uh, it, it basically have an error or or you know basically doing some kind of weird stuff. Um, so just want to remind you when you test your program, try to cover everything. You are writing very very small programs right now, and so it should be able to cover all bases. So think about all scenarios and test test one or two test cases to make sure that everything works perfectly. Um, other scenarios, for example, all zeros, I would test it too, just to make sure that my program works. Basically, you're trying to break your program and not let your users accidentally break your program, okay? Then in the quiz, um, this particular question a lot of you have problems we kind of talked about it in the previous videos but um, let me reiterate and maybe give you more precise information so why is this float x equals to 14 divided by 4 it, the answer is 3 so we talk about the order of precedence of the operators. So what are operators? What are the operators in here? Um, flow is a data type. X is a variable. This is the assignment operator. 14 divided. Divide is also an operator, division operator by 4. So which have the precedence first? Which the the divide or the assignment will be executed first. That's actually very important. So let's look at this chart that we've seen before and please look at Appendix X. I highly recommend that you go and try to understand and memorize some common operator that you would use because I'm sure it will come back to you in test or when you are working on your assignment. So you see the division is very high in the order of precedence. So it means it's going to be um, executed before other operator like assignment. Therefore, here, meaning division is going to be executed first before the assignment. So the compiler would ignore this part 
of the statement and execute just this part first. The division operator. Fourteen is an integer. Four is an integer. When the integer is divided by an integer, it will only give you the whole num whole number. It will return only the whole number, which we also talk about earlier in the math operators, right? Um, so when five is divided by two, it will return two and not two point five because it's an is it understood as an integer divided by an integer. Therefore, fourteen divided by four is going to be three, with remainder two, but the remainder two will be ignored in this case, because it's not a percentage. Yeah. So now, fourteen divided by four, a three is returned. So that three is going to be assigned to x, even though x is a float, but the value is still three. Now, this one actually. It's a lot of uh, prob trouble also. So basically, what it does is is to operate um, using this operator in front of the assignment and onto the original value and then assign it back to x. So basically, x plus equal one can be translated to x. Is equal to x plus one. So you basically put the x in the front, and then do the upper put the operator here, and then and then the value after the equal sign, right? So here x is equal to zero in the beginning. So if x uh, plus one is equal to one, so now now x has a value of one. From here. Uh, one minus minus two, it becomes minus one. Minus one times three becomes minus three, and then minus three divided by four. What would it be? As we know, integer divided by integer is going to be a whole in integer, which um, in this case is zero. And then um, you might have problem locate the main dot cpp. I I think one or two people asked me about this. So um, in Xcode, it's actually pretty simple. If you go to Xcode and then you go to the file and then you click the show in find founder. This is the main dot cpp file, and so you can just drag and drop in canvas to canvas to submit your assignment. And then for Windows, um, this is a link that we have in previous slides. Um, basically, if you look at the instruction how to create a new project, somewhere in the line you have to locate, you have to, you know, say where your project will be at, and that's the location. And so underneath here, you will find your main.cpp. So I want to talk a little bit about how to um, succeed in this class, and let's get rid of that. Um, how to succeed in the class? Um, so when I was taking this class, like I was a student, like you you are right now, I actually read the textbook before I go to the lecture. I think that. Is why I really uh, learn it really fast. Um, basically, I s it's the most efficient way, in my opinion. You read the textbook and then you watch the video. So the videos um, is is your review basically for the concept to get into your head. And then I um, do a lot of figuring out on my own, um, running small pieces of program. To figure out the syntax of things that it might not be explained very well, or I didn't understand what it meant, because sometimes doing it is really the easiest way to remember, instead of passively reading or or just sitting there trying to understand it. Um, I would say that for the videos, you can replay the video many times. You can stop somewhere and then play with the the code first before you continue with the video, and if um, when I was demoing, you can slow down the video actually, 
um, um, there's there's a a setting you can set how fast the video is being played. Um, and of course, like I said, experiment with the code. It's the computer is not going to explode. Nothing's going to be so bad, really. So just um, experiment. The book exercises are useful to test your concept. The quizzes I really try to make the quiz cover a lot of concepts so that um, if you finish the quiz um, successfully, you probably know a lot already, and also you can attempt the quiz three times. Um, I am really trying to help you to get an A, every single one of you, because I think you can if you want to. Um, of course, uh, doing the labs is important. Being a programmer, if you don't write programs, I don't know what you can do. Um, so if you have a problem, try to figure it out yourself first. I really think that the only way to learn anything is is you have to learn it. You have to figure it out. The more time you spend on figuring it out, here and there you would you would get something out of it. Um, Google is a good tool. Of course, there's your, there's your textbook, Stack Overflow, like I talked about. But if you got really few stuck, um, or sometimes it's just nice to have someone else to bounce ideas off. Um, the, there's a canvas has a chat so you can go and ask your your classmates um, how they are doing what uh, you know or tips that they can give you it's always nice to contact other human beings and then this net tutor it's uh, I think it's for um, you can try try it out it's free um, there are the lab uh, on campus also contact me if you need help um, I'm always here to to help you out to be successful. So, but when you ask for help, you have to help me to help you. I got a lot of emails saying that, hey, I got stuck, my program doesn't work. But if you don't send me your program, I have no way to know where you're stuck, uh, what kind of of uh, tips I can give you because I'm not going to give you the answer. I mean, honestly, that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to help you to learn. And so, you have to help me to to help you to figure it out. Um, last module, video five, we also talked about. I also talked about how to report report bugs. So I think you should watch that video and then try to report your bugs in your program to me, so that I can help you debug if that's what you need. Um, and then also. I'm not here 24 seven to answer your question. So it will take me a while to get around to it. Ask the questions early. And also sometimes it might be uh, something that I need to be aware of. And so the sooner you ask, other students won't get into the same problems. Um, and save my time because honestly, the more time I have, the more time I can help you. And more time I can make the videos, make the class material better. So try to hand in the labs on time. I know the last two times we have changes, so we postponed the lab um, assignment due dates. But I hope to not have to do it again in this whole semester. And then hand in the labs exactly as required. You know, for some reason, you copy and paste the code in an email. I'm not going to look at it. I'm sorry. Um, you have to put it in a format that is easy for me to grade you. So um, if you put it in an email, I can't definitely help you. If you have question, put it at least in a CPP file so that I can run it or put it in the CPP.sh so that I can click the link, I, I can see it. So you have to make it convenient for me also as I'm making it convenient for you to learn this material. Yeah, fair. So. Um, I think it's time for us to meet each other and know uh, what's your inspirations, uh, if you have any struggles or uh, if there are things that um, I can help you with. So I have blocked out some time to talk to you. Um, I think 15 minutes may be enough. If not, we can always extend it or we can always find another time to talk. So we will go to 
the course material for for module three.